Okay, guys, this is uh, slide one in our imperialism unit, um, and it's entitled America Turns Outward. Um, this is uh, really the beginnings of when America becomes a world uh, power, and uh, imperialism, or uh, one country taking over another country to run it as its own, um, this is when America gets involved with that. Imperialism is not new. Uh, it's been going on since the beginning of time. Uh, one group takes over another one. That, that's just how things have gone. Um, but this is the time when America gets into it. Uh, we were a colonial, uh, we're a colony of Great Britain, so we were sort of a uh, on the other end of imperialism initially. Now we are on the colonizing uh, end of it. So things have kind of flipped here. Um, let's talk about several uh, kind of reasons for uh, imperialism, and there's four main ones here, or really three, three main ones, uh, and one of them breaks down a little bit. Uh, but the first one is economics, okay? And um, there's two uh, sort of reasons that play into the economics of imperialism. The first one deals with natural resources. Um, as factories were growing, we've talked about the Industrial Revolution and all of that, uh, as factories are growing and more and more goods are being produced, more and more raw materials are needed. Um, and not all of those can be found naturally in the United States. So we can do one of two things. We can either pay another country uh, and buy the resources from them, or we can take over another country and get the resources for free. Uh, so um, the, the fact that other countries have what we need sort of drives uh, imperialism in the United States, uh, the need for natural resources that are not found here in the U.S. Right? Um, and then once you have all the resources to build all of the goods that you're going to build, um, you get the second of our economic reasons here, foreign markets. You have to have a place to sell all those things um, that you are building. Um, and this sort of ties in uh, farmers and factory owners, the more goods they produced, the more food they grew, wanted more places to sell it. Uh, so we would go out and we would take over another country um, making it a part of the United States, and then you tell that other country, you're now part of the U.S., we're the only ones you can do business with. You can't trade uh, with Europe. You can't trade with Asia. You trade only with us. Uh, so it's a, it's a guaranteed market for farmers and factory owners to sell the goods they're producing. Right? Uh, the second reason here um, is religion. Uh, Christian missionaries looked for new souls to convert. Um, there was the belief in the superiority of the Anglo-Saxon civilization, that we knew best how everyone else should live. Um, and if you're not living the way we are and at the standards we are, then clearly all you're lacking is our help uh, getting you there. Uh, it's, it's a very sort of, uh, you know, um, it, it's, a, it's a weird sort of attitude to hold, uh, that we have all the answers, um, and we're going to share them with you, you know, that, that we've got it right, you've got it wrong, if you just listen to us, you could be doing it the right way too. Uh, so we go into these other countries and tell them, that, oh, that religion you're practicing, that pagan religion, uh, you've got to get rid of that, uh, and we introduce Christianity to these other countries, whether they want it or not. And we tell them, this is your new religion. Um, there were Catholic missionaries, Protestant missionaries, both. Um, but uh, religion plays a much bigger part than you might think. Uh, the idea that we uh, are superior to you. So you have to start doing it our way. Right? Uh, and the last big uh, area here is military. Right? Um, as our military grows, it looks for places to exert its power. Okay? Uh, in particular, uh, a new steel navy. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, when he becomes president, 
Uh, even as Assistant Secretary of the Navy, he starts rebuilding the Navy uh, into a modern steel Navy. Uh, so we send our, our steel Navy around the world uh, and end up doing battle with countries who are still fighting with wooden ships. Uh, it's a very one-sided fight, as you can imagine. Uh, there was an important book written by a man named uh, Captain Alfred Thayer Mahan, M-A-H-A-N, Alfred Thayer Mahan, M-A-H-A-N. Uh, he wrote a book called uh, The Influence of Sea Power, S-E-A, uh, The Influence of Sea Power Upon History. Right? Alfred Thayer Mahan, The Influence of Sea Power Upon History. Uh, and that's the third time I've said his name in this title, so hint, you're going to need to know it. Right? Um, and in his book, The Influence of Sea Power Upon History, Captain Alfred Thayer Mahan argues that uh, control of the sea was the key to world dominance, that if we are indeed going to become a world power, the only way that's going to happen uh, is through control of the seas. Uh, the British had long figured this out, the French and so forth, all the European uh, colonial powers, uh, had big navies, and the U.S. is going to join the, uh, not only join the fight, but lead the fight with our new modern uh, steel navy. Okay. So, again, three big sort of reasons here for um, uh, imperialism, American imperialism, economics, religion, and military. Okay. Now, once we start kind of reaching out to other countries and, you know, interfere in their goings-on, um, we have to have some sort of laws or policies governing these things. Uh, one of the first of those is uh, what's called the Big Sister Policy. Okay. Um, and uh, here at the bottom of the page, uh, you see Big Sister Dora there. Honestly, I just typed Big Sister Policy uh, into Google Images and up pop Dora. So that's what you get. Um, the Big Sister Policy was... Uh, uh, pushed by a Secretary of State named James Blaine. James Blaine. Um, and the, the purpose of this is to convince Latin American nations to open their markets to American traders. Uh, convincing Latin American nations to open markets to American traders. Uh, if you think back to our last unit, um, dollar diplomacy, Right? and U.S. Country, uh, companies investing in Latin America, this is all part of uh, the big sister policy. It's kind of the, the overarching theme that we can either go to war with uh, uh, Latin America or we can just convince them to trade exclusively with us. Well, it's cheaper just to convince them to trade with us. Uh, and it, they do, by and large. Uh, most Latin American nations are happy to do business with the U.S. They don't have a lot. They don't have... Uh, a lot of industry, they're not industrialized, uh, so anything, any manufactured goods they need to buy, we'd be thrilled if they'd buy them from us. So, um, to kind of formalize this, uh, the first, uh, oops, sorry, I switch back there, the first Pan-American Conference okay, um, is held in 1889 uh, to formally sign trade agreements with Latin American nations, Pan Americas. Pan means across or around. Um, so across the Americas, North America, Central America, South America. Um, here you see the uh, the newspaper um, from the New York Tribune uh, announcing delegates to the Pan American Conference at Rio sail this week. Okay, and there's the, the the beaches of Rio and all of that. Um, so 1889, the Pan American Conference would uh, formally sign uh, trade agreements with Latin American countries that was put forth through the Big Sister policy. Okay? So that's basically why uh, imperialism. Uh, and then the following slides will look at some specific examples of American imperialism.